We strongly believe music is a very important component in holistic wellness. What are your relationship with music is? Either listening to music or making music. These are very powerful tools to engage multisensory and motor networks related to the brain and for many music has the power to connect, engage, thereby bringing not only mental clarity but also as a tool for therapy. Taking Rasa, emotions, the take on music therapy has been the cognitive impact of Swara, Shruti, Laya along with the Ragas which can be used as a therapeutic intervention tool. Music therapy is not a buzzword and it is real. Music as an intentional therapy has been radically reinvented and is emerging as one of the hottest trends in digital wellness. We at DigiNext Health are adopting digital technologies like the AI and machine learning to help identify music structural property and its impact on the heart rate, sleep pattern and how it can be used as a therapeutic intervention tool. I'm happy to be in conversation with Dr. Shantala Hegde, who is an associate professor and consultant neuropsychologist at the Neuropsychology Unit and Neuro Rehabilitation Services at National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Bangalore. She is the faculty in charge of the Music Cognition Lab in the Department of Clinical Psychology. She brings in this rare combination of she herself being a very eminent, trained Hindustani singer and her deep and vast research knowledge in the areas of neurosciences. And we at Digital Wellness are extremely excited and happy to be speaking to Dr. Shantana Hegde to understand her views on this beautiful relationship between the brain and music. Let's get talking to Dr. Shantala Hegde now. Welcome to my channel, Digital Wellness, uh, Dr. Shantala Hegde. It's a pleasure having you uh, talk to us today. Uh, we at Digital Wellness, uh, part of DigiNext Health, um, believe in holistic approach to health and wellness. And I am personally of a strong belief that music as an intentional therapy is radically changing and uh, is a fantastic tool for therapeutic intervention. Uh, as there is a big relationship between the music and the brain. One question uh, always comes to my mind, is music therapy real? And if so, what music constitutes music therapy? Okay. okay. And first of all, Namaste. Thank you for having me uh, on this uh, uh, program, this channel. It's my pleasure to kind of share my views on uh, music and brain and uh, music intervention and about music therapy in general. Uh, is music therapy real? Yes, it is real. And uh, can we do anything without our brain? Not really, because brain is our instrument and in how we interact with the environment, how we think, how we human beings. So everything has got to do with the brain. And uh, more so in the field of neuroscience, uh, music is taking a prominent place because uh, brain is still an enigma. We know um, very little and we are uh, forging towards understanding the functioning of the brain itself from different uh, windows and different perspectives. And music has been that way a powerful method and a tool. The reason being that uh, uh, for a very long time, we thought music is just a uh, you know, sociocultural phenomena. It just uh, there and it's just for mere entertainment and uh, maybe for relaxation and so on and so forth. But what we know today is that uh, music engages um, a lot of our uh, brain functions, cognitive functions, which uh, are also in uh, useful in non-musical domain of functioning, such as attention, you know, uh, planning, emotion. So it's all like you know a symphony that the various area of the brain uh, connects together, and we enjoy music, we perceive music, we listen to music. 
and also we produce music so um, it's one of the powerful method uh, for us to understand the functioning of the human brain itself uh, i'll explain about that a, maybe a little later but uh, for your question on whether music therapy is real yes it is because uh, for ages uh, we know that uh, music is therapeutic so we need to know the difference between the term something being therapeutic versus therapy i would like to underscore that uh, part because uh, music is definitely therapeutic because uh, from it cuts across lifespan from babies infants perhaps even the fetus in the womb responds to music and even the elderly uh, engage in music it helps us uh, uh, experience emotion express emotion uh, regulate our emotion uh, so it has multiple benefits uh, kills our boredom uh, helps us to interact with other human beings so it's more a social engagement it has a lot of benefits on our overall health so music is therapeutic that way but the moment we say music therapy uh, it becomes more a technical domain uh, it's like you know you go to a doctor and the doctor will diagnose you and say okay you have these 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 deficits and you'll have to take these medicines so when you go to a trained music therapist uh, someone who has proper clinical training someone who has the ability to diagnose certain uh, functions abilities and thereby plan the intervention module so it has to do with some goal with aim uh, as to what you're treating so it can't be a generic thing of saying okay um, just listen to music and um, you know overall benefits will happen that's like uh, to give you another example it's like having good food for example a good food good diet is always healthy but when you go to a dietitian they will know they will look at your uh, profile and say okay you have these these is vitamin deficiency you have to take this food uh, more in quantity so when you go to a music therapist a well trained therapist they will first decide as to what functions am i addressing in this therapy session and uh, depending on the clinical training that they have so he, he or she may be a clinical neuropsychologist or a psychologist with music therapy training or a speech therapist with music therapy training or purely a music therapist from trained in uh, different schools of thought so there are different schools of music therapy more so in the west not so much in india uh, depending on that their approach to understanding the clinical condition and their techniques so in music therapy there is both passive uh, music therapy and active music therapy active wherein the patient or the client is actively engaged in either production of music and engaged in um, singing or playing an instrument and thereby um, have the therapeutic process going so there is a difference between therapy and therapeutic and music therapy yes is a field so there is a huge scope for uh, scientific research and uh, that's what neuroscientists like me and there are several others all over the globe trying to understand how the brain uh, engages itself in perceiving music producing music and how does this process of healing uh, what in that particular music therapy sessions or uh, musical engagement um uh, sessions happen so why and how of music therapy is being answered so there's lot of evidence based research that needs to come out lot of um, case series case reports are present so when you when you talk about scientific evidence it's like a pyramid so uh, i'll show you um a slide uh, to explain that further so you have case reports and the highest form of evidence would be what we call as randomized control trials so double blind randomized control trials which will definitely tell us that yes this form of intervention has benefits in given conditions um you know uh it's such a deep topic but uh, with your vast uh, research and knowledge and also uh, you being a trained uh, hindustani uh, classical musician um you know um how do you think brain responds to these sound patterns because you beautifully explained about the, the difference between using music for therapeutic needs versus music being used for therapy per se so uh, i just wanted to understand uh, you know how does 
brain respond to this various sound patterns okay so until a few decades ago you know uh, even the people in the scientific field thought there is a stark uh, bifurcation between right and left hemisphere so in our brain we have two hemispheres right and left so there was this uh, popular uh, theory that uh, left is for reasoning language processing and right is only for art form uh, music for example or painting and uh, so on and so forth but what we know today is that any of these uh, behavior or functions uh, it's not just so clearly right or left it there will be a predominance of one particular hemisphere but engaging uh, almost you know different parts of these hemispheres so it means that there is a balance between this right and left happening for any of these functions so music also is thought as more a right hemisphere involvement um, uh, process but what we know today is that um, music especially the brain um, processes it more like uh, you know different components so when you say something is music how do we define music it's not just a sound pattern right so every sound or every sound that we hear is not uh, considered as musical when we say music it has a grammar it has syntax it has a pitch it has tempo it has lyrics it has emotion so that we combine everything and automatically it's almost like so uh, it's such an automatic process that we enjoy music but actually what the brain does is that it actually does this feature analysis each component is analyzed in different parts of the brain so neuropsychologists call it as modular approach to music so pitch is processed differently tempo is processed differently meter is processed differently emotions and there are different areas of the brain assigned to process this information ultimately they all come together for us to have this experience of listening to music um so in in uh, therapy when we are talking about uh, music as therapy we are also looking at these different parts of the uh, brain areas uh, are also responsible for other functions so when i say the prefrontal functions so as you can um, show, see in the slide there are uh, prefrontal areas that are important for thinking reasoning uh, our ram so to say uh, in the computer terminology um and then you have memory regions you have regions specifically for emotional processing so in in therapy situation in clinical conditions they can uh, lead to uh, deficits in uh, you know various other domains of functioning for example following stroke or head injury patient may have deficits in uh, memory deficits in attention deficits in reasoning so with music therapy the recent uh, approach is the neuroscientific uh, method of uh, looking at it is that can we use music and the very same areas that are engaged in processing music can it have beneficial effect on the non musical domain of functioning and this is what we call as uh, near transfer and far transfer in terms of uh, brain functioning and brain has this unique uh, feature or characteristic uh, feature um veritable nature that we call is that of neural plasticity that means our human brain is not just uh, you know just there and it's very hard wired and just um then degenerates over time aging happens and so on and so forth but it's a dynamic um uh, organism in the sense the brain interacts with the environment and functionally and structurally keeps changing itself so um our experiences uh even short term experiences and long term experiences are known to have both uh, changes in the brain at functional level as well as um, a structural level so yeah so you know you mentioned something about emotions uh you know while uh, it's a known fact that uh, music and emotions go hand in hand um how do you use that as a uh tool for your therapies okay um music uh, is a strong elicitor of emotion i agree with you and in fact that's one of the uh, the top one reason why people engage with music um knowingly or unknowingly it helps them to either regulate emotion express emotion um 
and uh, experience emotion. Um, when it comes to uh, understanding, as I said, I'm more interested to understanding the functioning of the brain itself. Uh, the challenge that we had, the neuroscientists in the field of neuromusicology had to answer is that uh, music engages the very same emotional areas that are you know, yeah, responsible for emotional processing in other real life situations, uh, like happiness and sadness and joy and the whole range of emotions that we experience. Um, when it comes to therapy, uh, there are, as I said, there are different schools of uh, thoughts and approach. Um, I, my, in my clinical experience, I use it more to help them to regulate their agitation. For example, patients with dementia or patients with head injury, they experience what we call as personality changes or some people become irritable, there is anger outburst, they have emotional discontrol. So often um, soft instrumental music can help them to calm down and then their engagement in other forms of intervention like cognitive remediation, cognitive rehabilitation is far more, uh, uh, you know, uh, they're far more amenable for other uh, modes of therapy as well. You know, I'm, uh, uh, I've caught on uh, your earlier, uh, um, uh, you know, sentence that you mentioned about uh, music as a therapeutic intervention uh, versus music as a therapy intervention are two different areas. And, uh, uh, you know, I think uh, that's very well said, but uh, that also, uh, um, you know, gets me to another question in terms of when I use music as a as a uh, uh, intervention, uh, when I use it as a, thera a therapy tool, uh, is it only certain areas of diseases like you just mentioned about them, dementia, anxiousness, or can music help address all areas of disease? Um. Music has been used in different conditions, medical conditions, not just neurological or neurosurgical conditions. So even uh, in uh, cardiology, neuro oncology, not just neuro area, but oncology, uh, there is music therapy that has uh, widespread uh, 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 scope in terms of its uh, approach and its uh, um, benefits. Uh, as I said, the need is definitely for a lot of systematic research in the field uh, and it's growing. It's almost exponentially growing in, in, in the field of uh, music, in the field of brain and science and cognitive science and uh, music therapy field itself. Um, now, coming to uh, the, the fact of from the neuroscience point of view, as I said, uh, music is considered as one of the best cognitive gym because it engages almost all brain areas at one go. So for from my area of specialization as a neuropsychologist, for me, music one is so appealing. So it can cut across individuals across lifespan. So even children respond to music, elderly respond to music. Um, so music can be a very good tool to help them recover their uh, cognitive deficits um, and also address some of the behavioral issues that we see in neurological and neurosurgical conditions. You know, um, um, there are certain uh, uh, places that talks about what is called as Raga Chikitsa, you know, using mm -hmm. Ragas to heal. What is your viewpoint on that, Dr. Shantala? Okay, so being a trained Hindustani musician myself, I feel yes, do ragas do have their own uh, uh, different uh, hues, the texture, the emotional experiences that they can bring about in the audience and the performer. Yes, because the permutation combination of each notes can lead to different kind of experiences. The challenge, however, is that uh, in my research also, what we found is, is it's very important to look at uh, the features of the music as well. So it is not just uh, as easy to say that this raga will be for this particular disease, this raga will be for this particular disease, because as we know, the common denominator of all ragas of Indian classical music, and I can more so say confidently about Hindustani classical music, is that uh, the common denominator, the emotion is peacefulness, irrespective of whether a particular raga may sound uh, 
happy or joyful or certain ragas may sound more um, uh, sad or melancholic or longing feeling that so navarasas that we talk about the rasas uh, so the common denominator rasa is peacefulness and there is a strong link between the spiritual experience also among the listener as well as the uh, the performer and that has more socio cultural uh, you know impact in that sense um, the reason behind uh, that would be that we are uh, we are basically trained in that socio cultural milieu to experience that but it's very tricky um, in my research what we found was rather than saying this raga versus that that raga or a b c ragas it's important to look at uh, which phase of raga elaboration are you talking about because uh, the elaboration itself as we know uh, it goes on for almost half an hour to one hour depending on the performer the instrument and the the uh, artist level of um, expertise that it moves from let's say ala phase to jorj ala phase or the tabla portion the composition the drut and the ati drut uh, from a neuroscience point of view and the brain point of view this changes in the tempo the changes in musical feature that means we call it as event density how many notes come in in a given time point um it all has an impact on emotional experience so it's not just this particular raga but you must also look into which phase of the raga who is the artist if you are uh, looking at passive listening you know as a uh, technique Uh, all that would uh, matter yeah it's very tricky very tricky again i would also um, uh, highlight the point that it depends on the the theoretical background from which the therapist comes from so if that particular therapist believes in the indian traditions of raga chikitsa they may have a different kind of answer they may even look into the chakras and the and the nadi and so on and so forth but uh, purely from the current neuroscience the western science point of view if we have to answer about ragas and uh, the effect of ragas then the question would be how many ragas if this raga has this effect can few other ragas b c d e can it have the same effect that would be very very challenging right you know um come uh, stating on emotions uh you know i was uh, when when we were researching one thing that uh, we found was uh, people responses to sad emotions are greater than joyous uh, response you know i found it uh, uh, you know a little uh, strange but from a, a you know neuroscientist uh, point of view what is uh, what do you Uh, why and what do you think and by the way is this correct because this is something that while we were researching we found that people really really respond beautifully to uh, sad emotions yes so that's another uh, question that people asked as i said initially uh, neuroscientists were challenged that um, is music really real does music really evoke true emotion true emotion in the sense is it akin to the real life emotion so today we have uh, studies using methods like eeg or uh, functional mri or pet scan and different kind of you know advanced technology to say which areas of the brain get activated when we are listening to certain kind of music and what we have found is that uh, definitely it engages the uh, deeper areas of the brain you know medial areas that we call the limbic system that are uh, important for emotional processing and the very same areas get activated that's another reason perhaps why music is so addictive in nature because it activates the reward center of the brain the very same area which would get activated when you are really um, engaging in a very joyful moment in your real life or when you are engaging with good food good you know something that rewards you and what we call as dopamine release happens uh, neurotransmitter wise uh coming to sadness yes when it comes to music people do engage in you know and enjoy sad music and this has been a question uh, to answer and research is still ongoing whatever that has been done so far uh, not from my lab but from um, lab from uh, montreal and us uh, they have found that um, people who listen to sad music and enjoy sad music are also high on empathy 
Um, they say that the David Huron, in fact, a professor from Ohio State University was uh, a pioneer in this field of uh, research. In, in his book called Sweet Anticipation, he dwells uh, more in detail and says, uh, perhaps this is more like an exercise that we do mentally uh, to experience uh, perhaps sadness in real life. So when I said cognitive gym or emotional gym, the cognitive fitness, um, people have tried to answer what is the real role of music in our lives. It, today we know anthropological evidence shows that music has been with humans, not just in the last few decades or thousands of decades, but really uh, music existed even in Neanderthal age. That means 40,000 or you know, uh, years ago. That means music is so biologically grounded. It has been passed on from generation to generation and it's in our genes. So perhaps it plays a very important role, not just as a form of entertainment, but it has its impact on our emotion regulation, cognitive uh, level of functioning. And therefore, uh, even engaging in sad music is like preparing ourselves, you know, like you prepare for warfare beforehand, right? So you're preparing for um, any situation that will help us regulate our emotion in real life. Yeah, so it's, it's uh, like a prophylaxis, what we call. It. So you're improving your cognitive reserve. and um, But people who are not trained in music need not feel sad. You know, I'm not trained in music or maybe I'm not really good with music. No, what we consider is uh, each and every human being who is neurologically intact is also musical in nature. There are only small percentage of people who can't uh, really process music. Otherwise, everybody processes music. So musicality is like on a continuum. Some may excel, some may become professional musicians, but everybody listens to music and enjoy music. Yeah, you know, that was uh, one last question that I had in my mind. Uh, you kind of preempted it while talking about the uh, addiction to music. But, you know, uh, I I'm always curious. Why are people addicted to music? Doesn't matter what's the genre, uh, you know, whether it's Indian classical or Western, jazz, you know, a variety of music. But till date, I can tell you, I've never come across somebody who says they don't like music. So mm -hmm. uh, why are uh, humans uh, addicted to music? Yeah, so one is, of course, uh, it touches deep down. It, it triggers emotion, emotional experiences. We are all emotional beings. Two, uh, as I said, it engages the reward center. So every time you listen to music, you feel good. The feel good factor of it, it releases endorphins, it relaxes you. So there is neurochemical changes that happens and your body tells that this is good for you in a way. Three, it's very, very complicated. Therefore, research in psychology and music, music and cognition, music and cognitive neuroscience is just emerging and you know it's like exponentially growing because there's so many unanswered questions or complicated questions even our personality our temperament determines what kind of genre of music we really engage in engage in uh, throughout our lifespan we may stick to certain genres uh, studies have shown that so uh, our personality our temperament also determines and our exposure to music so i may not know jazz until the time that I'm exposed to it, perhaps through our peer group or, you know, peer group engagement. So there is other variables in the social milieu that can determine what kind of genre I might start liking. Uh, peer acceptance is a very, very strong uh, uh, factor as well. And um, why? I think that that's the answer that I gave. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, Dr. Shantla Hegde, this was... Uh, very informative and then uh, to me personally uh, uh, you know very joyful uh, interaction uh, 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 with, with yourself uh, with so much of knowledge in this topic and you know this is an area which is also very close to us at uh, DigiNext Health and uh, thank you so much um, for this wonderful session looking forward uh, to seeing more, more from you. Thank you thank you so much for having me on board. Hope you enjoyed this conversation with Dr. Shantala Hegde, who uh, wonderfully explained the connection between brain and music. This was just an introductory session. Stay tuned for more interesting sessions on this topic from Dr. Shantala Hegde. Do like, share these stories. <music>